Design to me is it's the solution of a lot of the problems that we have on Earth. I say that because you know, when I started Afri Modern, I saw that I was losing a lot of myself in terms of one, seeking to understand my culture. I said to myself, if there's one thing I'm really good at, it's design. And if I can use that to rebuild myself and find myself and find my culture and get to know more, then I'm obviously doing something right with design. I realize how important it is, not only in terms of, you know, helping myself, but it helps. It, it, it's got this power to, solve a lot of problems that we have in the world in the most beautiful way too. So I was like, how do I tell these stories and keep them forever? And I realized that I had such a strong passion for furniture and I was like, yo, I'm gonna find a way to celebrate, you know, modern furniture because I love Scandinavian design, but then put myself into it and put a lot of like this bold African touch into it. And while that was happening, I would, things would happen at home culturally and I would find a way to tell these stories through the furniture. And that made me who I am today because everything that I do is an extension of my work and it represents me, it represents the celebration of Sviso celebrating Western and, 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 and modern culture, but also being this proud Zulu man that's just so proud of himself and, and his culture and his people and you know, seeing us at our highest form. The design process is quite, uh, it's different for every project or every story. Like, let me make an example with the one behind us here, the server unit. So um, Tessa Proudfoot Associates called me um, and she said, hey, we are working on the server, this house, the couple loves love and they love African art. And I was like, Okay, great. And I had the story that I did back in 2014 was called Utando. A friend of mine who was getting married and him and his partner had been in this beautiful relationship that had a lot of ups and downs, them losing their kid and still being together and holding it down. And I just loved how honest their love was. And the reason I say that was then I took elements of their love in terms of what love meant to them. And then I formulated these patterns that, you know, love is a journey and it has no start, it has no end when you're together. And that's why you have that line that's within the server. So the shapes are a big part of it from a cultural view. Historically, the triangles, the circles, and the Zulu beadwork geometry, I've taken a lot of inspiration from that. And I had to respect it because within Zulu culture, men are not allowed to, bead, to do beadwork. So I had to find a way to honor it and respect it and, and take all of those elements and that's why it's in the furniture so that it's there and people are used to the motifs and people understand the motifs and what the motifs mean. So like love is a journey and then what I did was I used geometric patterns from beadwork that represent the male and the female. Putting the male on top to guide and protect her and she's at the bottom because she's the root of the relationship. So there's these stories that I formulate, um, you know, using the geometry and when Tessa called me about the project, I said, I have an amazing project I think will, you know, will, story will fit for the house. Really, the process is different, you know. It depends on the story, what the story represents. Like this month, I am working on stories inspired by women. And women have always been a big part of my life. I was raised by my grandmother and aunt. So a lot of these stories focus on their strength, their love you know, the messages they shared with me, the stories they shared with me. And I take that and I turn it into patterns that then, you know, visually express that narrative that I'm trying to tell. So it's really haphazard in how it happens, but, you know, I try and pull it together so that when you see it with anything else that I do, it makes sense. You know, triangles are very part of what I do because they represent our start, our middle, our end. Lines are very important because they represent our journeys. Circles are very important because they represent the whole spirit of centrality. So I believe that um, we should all listen to each other and that's part of the value of respect. So it's those elements that are within the story. So materials, there's two options of doing it. I have the natural form where it's your words, your natural products, and then we have, you know, the duco and I'm also exploring greener materials because also within how AfriModern works. So the brand ethos is, I don't want you to come and buy another server again. 
It's about having this one server and then you protect it and love it because you're storing your more special goods in there. Um, reason being is because I understand that too much of everything is not good for the earth. So I try and make sure that we are cognitive of the materials we use. I try to make sure that at the factory we try and get the greenest paint. We try and find the best possible solution to create the product. So it's either we go the Tuco route when we make the stuff or we go the natural route. And I've always felt like, you know, shapes, color, finishes, and all of these things that come together in this piece of furniture really represent, you know, the human, the human experience in its most honest form. It represents how all of us are different, and yet we come together to create this beautiful thing called life, you know? And that's really how I try and, and, and see the work, you know, because I, I, I think of Afri-Modern. Afri-Modern in its most honest form is modern being the Scandinavian modern way of looking at things and African being the shapes, the forms and spirituality coming together to create this one lifestyle and way of thinking. I think I am here sitting here on this chair today it's because of everyone that's believed in my, in my journey and believed in my stories and you know so that when you look back with everything that you've did in your amazing career as a designer or whatever you may be you can honestly say that you contributed positively to the human race and that's really what I want to do to sit back maybe when I'm 75 if I get to 75 and I I look back and say, I did my very best in being a good human being and I contributed positively. And I'd say, if we could all aspire to that, it'd be amazing, you know?